All right, so Chris Neisel was a freshman pitcher on Notre Dame's 2002 College World Series team. He played a big part in that postseason run to Omaha. He ended up being drafted by the Cleveland Indians a couple years later after his junior season, and he's with us right now. How are you doing, Chris? Doing well, Sean. Yeah, good to be here. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Great to see you. And uh, I guess, you know, when you sit back, and think about that 2002 season specifically 20 years later, what are, what are maybe some of the first things that kind of come to mind for you? You know, I obviously I've thought about it a lot recently with uh, this year's run from Notre Dame baseball and their, um, their amazing uh, appearance in the college world series. But yeah, I mean, what I think about a lot is just really the teammates that we had. And, and I think that that was the best pure team I'd ever been a part of and just how we all gelled together and had each other's back and really uh, had confidence that we could play with anybody in the country. So just have a lot of really good memories of, of the team atmosphere. And uh, the run that we made was nothing short of spectacular as well. And just yeah. probably some of the best, best times of my life, you know, some of the most happy times and uh, definitely just proud to be a member of that team. Well, and you're a freshman and, you know, and like getting to talk to some of those guys and I've made kind of the same comment being around a lot of different teams back in those days that I agree with what you started with just the pure team aspect. You know, there was just so, and it, it obviously started with the leadership from the top down, you know, the player leadership, even with, you know, Steve Stanley and, you know, Andy Bushy and on down the line that, you know, the veterans, on yep. that group and, you know, mixing in the veterans and, and then young guys like you and Grant Johnson and some of the, you know, coming in and, and being part of, you know, such a big part of that run as well. There was just a great mix, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. And it, I think it says a lot about the culture at Notre Dame, the school, as well as the baseball team, right? It's like you bring in the number one recruiting class that year. We were fortunate enough to be ranked uh, the number one recruiting class with a team of, of guys that had already been there, you know, three years, well-established. And you never really know how those two groups are going to mix. Right. Right. But, um, but, but again, uh, everybody really got along. I mean, you know, we didn't really have those clubhouse conflicts that, that you see in, in most teams. Um, we gelled together. You had young pitching coupled with, uh, great position players that were well established and, and just a tried and true lineup. So um, it was just a, a cool dynamic. And again, something that I was just so happy to be a part of. You came right out of the shoot. I remember that year, 10 strikeouts in your college debut, you strike out nine in your next start. And it's like, you know, here's this, here's this, you know, fireballer, you know, with a good curveball <laughs> as well. But I mean, you're not a big guy, you, you know, you're like five eleven. But you yeah. had good velocity on that fastball. Where where did that velocity that you had come? You know where did you know, it come from? I I think a certain aspect of every athlete has some God given talent, and then there's a whole lot of hard work, grit, determination, and work ethic that goes sure. along along with it. But where I really and it's funny, my my nephew is at the same age where I think um, young athletes start to change, especially males going from their freshman year of, of yeah. high school to their sophomore. Um, and that's really where things started to change for me. And then even again, I, I feel like I hit another step going from junior to, to my senior season in high school and never really looked back, uh, physically from there and just kept, kept growing and, and developing. But, uh, but yeah, you know, coming out of the gate as a freshman at, at Notre Dame and, and getting those 10 and nine strikeouts, um, I was definitely fired up and I think <laughs> adrenaline had a lot to do with that as well. <laughs> I think you're right. You know, I, you know, when I watched you, there's a picture from that time that you always reminded me of. And I, I, I don't know if we've, you know, this was a discussion we ever had back then. I'll, I'll let you know who, who my guy is. I'll, I want to see if what you say first, you know, was there ever anyone, you know, from back then, you know, you really, you know, sort of tried to emulate any of that kind of thing? You know, uh, I don't, I don't know that. I did per se. I know my dad always wanted me to mirror Greg Maddox, but okay. I, don't, I don't think I don't think I give myself that much credit. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was, you know, a guy named Tim Hudson, maybe. Uh, yeah, that was a, you know, power powerball sinker guy with a, a good slider and curveball. That that maybe there was some comparisons to, but I'm curious of who you're thinking about. 
Well, that's funny that, you know, he'd say Maddox because, I, you know, you probably had a better fastball than Maddox to begin with. <laughs> yeah. He was obviously a lot more control. David Cohn is always the guy yeah. who came to mind for me. I mean, you know, again, you're, you're similar size. He might have been a shade taller than yeah. you, you know, and he might have been, you know, a little bit more, you know, three-quarter slot or, or whatever. But, you know, very, very similar, I thought. And especially, you know, just the – uh the competitiveness, you know, that both of you guys had. What do you, what do you think about Cone? Yeah, I, I like that comparison. I mean, hey, great, <laughs> great career in the in the big leagues. Um, I think again, going back to every athlete's born with something. I think that bulldog mentality was uh, yeah, partially sure. born with, but uh, always tried to escalate my game with runners on base, and I think he did a good job at that too. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm cool with the comparison. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we're, you know, that's not, not bad then. Yeah. So your freshman season's rolling along, you know, you're doing pretty well. All of a sudden it's early April and you come down with mono. Do you remember, you know, kind of like when, you know, things started feeling wrong? You know, was there kind of a moment that you remember? You know, I just remember being a little bit tired and that something was, was off, um, which when you're, when you're that young and, you know, you're firing on all cylinders. You have so much energy and ready to play. And it was, yeah. it was unlike me. So, um, so yeah, I remember going to the doctor and, and getting the test and getting the news, which was uh, definitely a setback. And, um, but it's, it's funny, you know, how things work out. It, it I feel like now is almost a little bit of a, a blessing in disguise. It was like maybe God telling me, Hey, take, take a step back and, uh, you know, re relax a little bit. Good things are coming because obviously we had a, a run that was, that was coming up and I was going to be called upon to, to contribute to. And I felt like I was like a, a horse at the starting gate when I came <laughs> back, like just ready to roll, you know, just being, being in a dorm room by yourself for six, four to six weeks, whatever it was. Um, I was so amped up to come back and contribute to the team. And um, we were already in the playoffs at that point. Quarantine before quarantine, I guess, <laughs> you know, yeah, I guess. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, then you did, you know, you came back and I remember it seemed like you, they brought you in in relief, like your first, t your first few times back. Right. Do you remember it? Yeah. So like, did you feel, you know, were you, did, were you feeling pretty close to a hundred percent right away? You know, yeah, was, I was feeling a hundred percent. I think they wanted to stagger me coming back a little bit just because of concerns around stamina and, you know, pitch count and sure they didn't want me to, you know, maybe go out and throw a hundred pitches in the first start, which give credit to, to Maneri and O'Connor on that. They always were looking out for a pitcher's best interest. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, I, I absolutely remember coming in relief, which was, was new to me. You know, I was always a starter up until that point. And, uh, but again, fired up to to come in in relief and close a couple games out. Well, then you guys are hosting the NCAA regional that year as the number seed, and you're basically the number three starter for the. You did pitch in relief though, in in the opener of that game, did they kind of, you know, did, did Brian O'Connor, you referenced there, the pitching coach Paul, did they kind of lay out what the plan was for you going into the weekend? Yeah, I remember them them telling me, hey, you know, we're, we're um, it's, it's possible that you come in in relief in a key situation, just be ready. Um, and, and all in and, and that day, all pitchers were ready. We all had our spikes on. There was no wear and turf like, <laughs> like in pro ball. <laughs> right. So, um, so yeah, I, I do remember them, you know, hinting at, Hey, you know, just be ready to come out of the gate. And then I sure was. So. <laughs> well, and then two days later, you, I think you know, got a couple outs in, in, in relief in that opener and then you start on Sunday and it's the clincher. If you win, you're, you know, you're going to win the regional. If you lose, there's going to be another game coming up, but you, you know, you came out six strong innings, anything really stand out to you, you know, from your start that day? Uh, that day, uh, that was Ohio state, correct? Correct. Yep. Yeah. I, I remember giving up a, a hit in between second and first that I was so mad at the pitch selection that I made. That's probably the biggest thing that I remember about that game, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, 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 threw, I I had a pretty solid game, but I remember I threw a changeup where I should have threw a fastball and I was still kicking myself for that. Um, but no, you know, overall it was, it was, it was such a compliment to be called upon in that, that situation right because it was it was such a big game and i was just happy that i could contribute to to the team and um getting us a win and, and moving on to the super 
Well, you know, you talk about pitch selection and talk to Paulo Tool about this. He was obviously he was a senior, you know, your catcher and and all that. And he had he played a big part in uh in pit, pitch selection. Did you guys ever um, you know, have any disagreements, I guess, or or were you guys on the <laughs> on the same page for the most part most of the time? You know, for the most part, I think we were on the same page. There's there's definitely uh disagreements that that came up but but that's what was cool about about that team and about you know pitching to a guy like Paul O'Toole uh if you had the confidence in the pitch right that's ultimately what matters you're you're the one throwing the ball so there was never too many too much pushback on on shaking him off you know unless he really had a strong opinion then he wasn't afraid to to drop his mask and call time out and come out to the right. mound <laughs> as you know right so um <laughs> so yeah i think it just goes back to like our, our team at, atmosphere and, and connection that we had and trusting one another well and you face nick i was gonna say you faced nick swisher that day as well from ohio state he ended up being a first round pick do, do you remember any of those at bats at all I I don't know if I remember specific at bats. I think he got one hit off me. I, I'm not. Sounds I'm not right. Sure. Yeah, but uh, I know they had a couple key guys on that team. I ended up playing in the Indians organization with um, w- with one of their pitchers, and we we had talked about that game uh, a couple times. And I, I definitely reminded him that that we won. Uh, <laughs> For <laughs> and sure, we moved on. But uh, but yeah, it's it's funny. There's there's so many guys that you come across, you know, when you when you play in uh, in the professional and after college, and you know, there's d- so many different guys from from different teams, and you you share these little stories, or even from your hometown. Yeah. Um, so it's always good to have a, a good laugh, especially when you're on the winning side, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's that's always the best way when you can, yeah. like you said, kind of anything they say, you've always got that to fall back on. Yeah. At the end of the day, I guess. So so you win that regional, and now you go to the the program's first super regional. And it's at Florida State, which I don't think I even mentioned at, at the top. You're from the state of Florida, of course. And, you know, your dad's alma mater was Florida State. You know, so was there kind of an extra special feeling going into that weekend for you to get to go back down there? Absolutely. Um, you know, my whole family was able to to come to that series, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, going down to Florida State, I think the whole team had a little chip on their shoulder, but I definitely did too because I wasn't recruited by Florida State, um, which was surprising because the other Florida schools were I was pretty heavily recruited by. Hmm. Um, so that was always in the back of my mind <laughs> uh, going down there. But, but going down to – yeah, <laughs> going down to face the number one team in the nation um, in a place like in a place like that with such a storied baseball uh, history and, and stadium and atmosphere. Um, it, it, it was uh, it was definitely a challenge, but but our team, we were up for it. You know, we uh, we weren't scared of anybody. And I think Coach Maneri did a great job of prepping us for that and getting our mindset correct that we could play with anybody in the nation. And don't worry about a ranking. You know, it's just a number. Right. Um, go out there and play your game. Right. And of course, you guys won the first game. Then Florida State turns around. They win the second game. So now it's the decisive game three. It's it's winner take all. If you win, you're going to the College World Series. What uh, what may be, you know, as the game three starter and a freshman and all these other things I just mentioned back in your home state and your dad's connection and everything else, your family's there. What were you uh, what? What what kind of feelings did you have waking up that morning in Tallahassee, getting ready for that start? Uh, def- definitely some nerves, some butterflies. You know, <laughs> obviously it's a, it's a big game. It's a game three, but um, but I was ready to roll. I had been pitching good up to that point. My arm was was rested. Um, going back to the kind of the blessing from Mono, I felt really well rested. I, one of the things I remember about that that game wasn't actually in the game. It was it was warming up and. I felt like, you know, I was missing my spots. I didn't feel really sharp in warming up for that game. And I remember Coach O'Connor saying to me, hey, you look great. Go get them. (laughs) Hey, positive reinforcement, right? (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, but once once I took the mound, I think the nerves nerves settled down and uh, I was ready to roll and I ended up, you know, obviously having a pretty good game. Yeah, absolutely. And I, the, the the plan that day was 
Okay, well, let's see if maybe Chris can can go five, and then they had Ryan Kalita and JP Gagne, you know, behind you in the bullpen. You end up going eight, though. You know, like you talk about, yeah, maybe a rough bullpen, but did that end up being maybe as good as you felt all season? By the time it was all said and done, I I think so. Yeah, we we were fortunate enough. We we had great defense that day. I remember some a uh, couple plays in particular, one by Brian Stavisky down the line, a diving catch. Um, a couple. I plays. think that was like the last out that you threw, right? Like, yeah, a, a, um, like the end of the eighth inning, maybe. That got us out of, yeah, it got us out of a jam in one of the at one of the later innings. I don't know if it was the seventh or eighth, but uh, it was towards the end of the game. And then I also remember a couple key plays by the middle infield by ha- I think Javi Sanchez was playing shortstop at that yep. point for us, and um, and right. Solman up the middle. So yeah, we 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 didn't make any mistakes. We played sound fundamental baseball. And then, you know, there was a couple, uh, I think, big strikeouts as well that I was fortunate enough to get and um, was able to settle down and be pretty sharp that game. And, you know, we just – the whole team played a really well-rounded, solid game. We um, had some clutch hitting and uh, solid defense, and we were able to, to put them away. JP coming in in that ninth inning, and, oh, my gosh. That was striking just, out the side. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That that change up he had. Guy, I wish I had that change up. Uh, <laughs> and it's he's he's talked about it that it's almost like a screwball just with between the movement that he had because there was so much yeah. there was just so you know it was almost you know again like a combination, you know, like a curveball slash change up. There was so much break on it. Yeah, I don't even know what to call that pitch. It was uh, <laughs> the way he <laughs> held it and threw it. I I, I couldn't throw I couldn't throw it like that. It was amazing. Um, it was a, it was an amazing weapon for him for sure. But I'm um, you know like you, again you're a freshman and you're in this hostile environment and you know and the crowd down there at Florida State was like nothing that you guys had really ever seen. And so here you are, game one starter and Florida State had just roughed you guys up the day before they scored eight runs in the first inning the day before. But then, you you know, you talked about a couple big strikeouts. You end up, I think they got a runner on, but you got a couple of strikeouts, including one to end that inning. That had to be big for you, you know, just to be able to, to get out of that situation early, you know, do what you wanted to do and and kind of get into the game that way. Yeah, for sure. I think that is definitely a, a confidence booster. Anytime you can get a big strikeout, um, early in the game, get out of a jam, settle in, um, and and make sure you're just getting outs and getting your team back back in the dugout to to see what we could scrap together as far as runs go. But I do remember that environment. I remember the the chanting from uh, the Florida State fans. They they definitely brought it, and and I think that game was even on a Monday, if I remember it was. correctly. Yeah, yeah. So you know, just even for a Monday, they packed the stands. It was uh, it was it was wild, but uh, I, yeah, I, it was it was one of the special days I think of my life. Probably one of the. The, my best games and uh, something that I'll always remember, especially having my family there and, and doing it somewhat in my own backyard. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, like you said, the fact that Florida state didn't even recruit you and, and, and their yard to have that kind of opportunity. That's, that's, that's pretty big. Yeah. So a few weeks back we had Brian Stavisky as well as Steve Solman and Steve Stanley on. And we talked about that ninth inning comeback at the college world series. Yeah, of course, that was the game against Rice. And it was another game that you started, you know, so you 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 start that game. It's an elimination game. What was what was that experience like, you know, just being on the mound, starting that game in Omaha, you know, even before any of that dramatics ever happened late in the game? Yeah, I mean, just the whole Omaha experience is is something that uh, is definitely special. And I I remember um being interviewed it live by ESPN uh, prior to the start of the, of the, of the World Series, which was uh, incredible. And I remember a couple. I think it was O'Toole. You know, he was he was making jokes and trying to throw me off as I was on on live television. Of course, he was <laughs> kind of expected by him. But right. um, but yeah, just you know, going going from a going into an environment like that with 30,000 fans or, you know, 25,000, 30,000 fans, and then playing against the number one team in in the nation again. Right. Right. Uh, The second week in an elimination game. uh, Whew. That's, that's a lot for an 18 year old kid. (laughs) (laughs) But at the time. 
you held up to it pretty well. You know? Yeah, at the time, you're not thinking about those things, right? You, you, um, you're, you're thinking about going out there, throwing strikes, get ahead of, getting ahead of batters, and um, doing what you know how to do on the mound. Um, it's it's now that I actually get nervous thinking about going to that, to that situation, <laughs> right? Back then, if you have all, you, you know, I, I like to think I had a lot of confidence just going into to the game. And uh, again, my you know my stuff was on the past the prior few weeks, and I felt good. And and Rice had some really good pitching, um, mm-hmm. some, some guys that you know three guys in particular that I think were all first rounders, and I ended up playing against them in, in the Cape Cod leagues. Of, uh, next two summers but uh but yeah what a, what a special game and uh that ninth inning comeback i actually caught a little bit of your interview with with those guys uh, oh was, did you yeah it was cool to see um uh, you know it made, it made me miss the team and miss the guys in the clubhouse and uh sharing some of those memories with them what was what was that like for you know because by the ninth inning you're out of the game what was that like for you watching that kind of inning unfold, you know, from Stanley's triple to ultimately Brian Stavisky's walk-off home run? Yeah, I still get chills thinking about it uh, because it was just a an amazing moment and comeback. I, what I also remember from that game was um, we were in the seventh inning with two outs and uh, being taken out at a point, <laughs> which I <laughs> thought I still had a little bit left in the tank. Right. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny the things that you, your mind chooses to remember. But, uh-huh. <laughs> but we, we, you know, coming out on top and getting a win. And uh, we, I, I remember hearing this and it, it brought back that we never went to it out. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so that was cool. Just just getting a win in the College World Series and, and moving on to, to live another day. And that's what you're, you're trying to do there in, when you're in the loser's bracket. Unfortunately, you're just playing play the next game, get a W and, and live another day and see where it takes you. I think you, you, you must have watched that interview because I think Steve Stanley said that in that yeah, interview he, that, he that, they, no, that you guys had never gone to and out. And I never yeah. thought about that until he said it. But that's yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. And I think that shows a lot of. Uh, character and heart of the team and gets kind of down to the foundation that when your back's against the wall, we were, we were always able to perform and come out and, and, uh, and have a good game, you know? Yep, absolutely. So a couple years later, a couple years after that, and I was thinking about this this morning. So you're a teammate of Jeff Samarja in 2004. Yep. And, you know, we all know about the nickname Samarja ended up with (laughs) shark, right? Yeah. So the story that's been told is that you're the man responsible for giving him that nickname. So is that is true or false? Is that a true story? That is a true story. Uh, <laughs> I think that it was it was not only me. Um, it, there was a few, probably a few other members of the staff that quickly jumped on to the nickname, and it seemed to fit. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I had caught wind of that a few years after I'd actually left and, you know, Jeff went on to have an awesome career. Uh, but yeah, there is definitely some truth to that. Do, do you remember like any of the origins of it? Like, I think that I had heard it had something to do with like you or somebody told him that he looked like, you know, like, like shark face, the cartoon or something like that. Does that yeah, sound, the, the you remember that? actually started as shark face. Uh, just cu- coming clean because <laughs> we we did see some comparisons in in his nose and uh, his teeth. He kind of like looked a little bit like a shark, which uh, which seemed fitting. And you know he 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 liked it. I think at the time, <laughs> I don't know if he did afterwards, but uh, but hey, if you're gonna be named after some animal that's pretty fierce, a shark. Not too bad. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, he seemed to, you know, he definitely, you know, like everyone Braced would it. walk around calling him shark. And, you know, that I think that he, that pretty much lasted throughout his big league career. For yeah. That matter. yeah. So he I must have liked it. Okay. Yeah. He, he embraced it and, uh, and rolled with it. So that's yeah. a sign of a good nickname, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. You should have like trademarked it and, you know, like merchandise or something like that, cashed in on it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris Niesel from Notre Dame's 2002 College World Series team. A lot of great memories, Chris. It's been great catching up with you. I appreciate you doing yeah, this you today. Yeah, you too, Sean. Thanks for having me. All right, absolutely. Appreciate it.